Good afternoon, everyone. I thanks uh, Professor Ravi Gupta and organizers for this opportunity. Uh, fracture, treatment of fracture neck of femur is still not fully solved. There is consensus on some points that we should try to preserve femoral head in patients if the age is less than 60 years, and if in elderly, we should replace it. But consensus still alludes to the method of fixation and the type of uh, replacement. For, for uh, optimal treatment of for any fracture, we need to define the characteristic of, of that fracture and there are many classification and these are few important classification anatomical which prop, uh, basically is tell us about the site of fracture within the femoral neck, Gordon's classification which tells us about the displacements and Powers classification which tells us about the inclination of the fracture. So if the patient is less than 60 years of age, there is good bone quality, fracture is undisplaced, minimally displaced or if it is displaced and we can achieve accurate reduction, then internal fixation is the method of uh, choice for treating such fractures. It is very important to achieve adequate reduction because poor reduction will result in interference with the blood supply which increases the chances of AVN and it also re reduces the apposition of the fragments which increases stress on the fixation, so increased risk of fixation failure. So reduction is more important for maintaining stability than the internal fixation. So there are many methods of uh, doing closed reduction. Basically, they are of two categories. Reduction with hip inflection, both lead better methods and fins method, they belong to this category, or reduction with hip in extension, which is most commonly used these days because of availability of C arm. The patient is put on the fracture table, on external, it is externally rotated to unlock the fragments, then traction is given to achieve the length, and then followed by internal rotation to uh, lock the fragments and correct any retroversion. If there is any translation, uh, posteriorly directed force is applied to correct this translation. And we can check our reduction with heel palm test or by uh, under CM by using Gordon's index or Lovell's criteria. Uh, what sort of a reduction is acceptable? Up to 10 degree of valgus can be accepted, but varus should not be accepted at any cost. We, up to 10 degree of uh, additional antiversion can be accepted, but we should try to avoid retroversion. But in some scenarios, we may accept up to 10 degree of retroversion as well. So tips and tricks as far as reduction is concerned, patient should be gently positioned on the fracture table to prevent any iatrogenic damage to the already damaged vascularity and to prevent any increase in the fracture displacement. We should avoid excessive traction to prevent valgus reduction. So what, what, what should be the method of uh, fixation? So I will just, there are many methods, but I will restrict myself to cannulated cancellous screws. They provide rotational control, they provide compression, they lead to minimal bone loss, and they work well for subcapital and transcervical fractures. But issue is how, how many screws we should put and what should be the configuration, whether we should put two screws, three screws or more, Threes are, three are usually sufficient, more are recommended if the fracture is combinated, but what should be the configuration? We need to understand what sort of forces are acting on the, this fracture side. Basically, there are two forces, varus force and the posterior rotation force, which is pushing the head into the retroversion. So we need to neutralize these forces, in, and we also need to assess what sort of bone quality is available to us to, so that our screws get hold of the best available bone. So there are many configurations uh, available. But they, they are basically a triangle, if we are using three screws, it's a triangle configuration or we can two screw, use two screws. If we, we are using two screws, basically it can be horizontal or vertical. But biomechanical studies have shown that a triangle with superior single screw has the best load bearing properties, which is followed by an inverted triangle configuration. So what, should, what would be an optimal screw placement? It would be an inferior screw along the calcar, which would resist inferior displacement and varus collapse, posterior along the neck, which would resist posterior displacement and retroversion, and then the anterior superior screw at the incised surface of the fracture to re again resist retroversion. So we should try to achieve three-point fixation with all the three screws. But if there is a posterior communication, we can consider putting a one addition screw and we can also consider putting a fully threaded screws to provide significant shortening of the neck. If it is a Powell's type 3 fracture, we can put additional transverse leg screw, also called cantilever screw, to increase the compression across the vertical fracture plane.
So this is the technique, patient is put on the fracture table, reduction is achieved, you can put screw open or percutaneously, a control guide wire is inserted along the anterior surface of the neck which will define the direction and anti-version of the definitive guide wires and using aiming device we put guide wires in pre-decided configuration parallel to the control guide wire and just short of the subcondral bone and we deter, uh, determine the length of the guide wires and we choose the length of the drill and the screw which is 5 millimeter less than the length of the guide wires. After drilling, we can use tap in young patients with dense cancellous bone and we should uh, uh, try to use washers whenever possible to provide penetra avoid penetration of the screws into the thin cortices. What are the tips and tricks? We should span the whole neck. It should not be bunched together because then the for, for ultimate load strength of this construct and the rotational uh, resistance would decrease. The screws should be parallel to each other. They, we should avoid divergent and convergent screws. It should be perpendicular to the fracture line for optimal compression. Threads should cross the fracture line. Tips of the shoot, screw should engage the strong subchondral bone. If there is a posterior combination, tighten the interior screw first to prevent posterior collapse into retroversion. If reduction is in slight varus, tighten the superior screw first to prevent further collapse into varus. Avoid distal insertion point and multiple drill holes because it can subsequently lead to subtrochantic fracture. If bone is osteoporotic, no tapping is required and in poor bone you can use bone graft substitute.